Well, this isn't a daunting task at all. <laughs> Follow up my brother. Sitting here in front of everybody, it's hard to imagine when I thought about this where I was going to find the words. You know, I read all the lengthy and numerous tributes to Dad, and I thought, well, certainly as one of his kids, I can offer something that's insightful and personal and memorable that really sums up the essence of his greatness. And then Stephanie told me the service was only going to be an hour and a half, and I wasn't the only speaker. <laughs> and I said, well, that's not going to be enough time. As a matter of fact, there's not enough hours in a week. Top it off, I wasn't real sure the words had been invented that would do him justice. But nonetheless, I opened my laptop and started doing a little research. Thought about the Bible, Shakespeare, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, Thomas Carlyle, George Washington, anybody I could think of who might have a scripture or a passage or a quote that would, that would do dad justice and sum everything up. Now, as I was doing that, I realized one wasn't going to be enough. I was going to have to string together a myriad of them to really encompass all the great facets that dad had, all the wonderful things that he was about. And I realized, well, I don't want to just string together a bunch of other people's words. I want this to be personal. So I said, you know, I'll weave in analogies and comparisons, funny stories and anecdotes, make it my own, and, you know, maybe that'll be enough. Well, I got started, big task. I got about 10 pages in, closed my eyes, laid my head back, and I had this flash of a memory from middle school. I had a class, and we had a public speaking unit, and I knew Dad was in politics. I sort of knew what that meant at the time. I knew it meant he gave speeches, and he was pretty good at it. And I wanted to impress him. I wanted to make him proud. So I paid attention in class and researched my topic and wrote my notes down, made my note cards, numbered them in the top right-hand corner, just like the teacher said, practiced a little bit, went into the den and said, Dad, I want to give you my speech. He said, son, that's great. He said, what are those note cards for? I said, well, Dad, the teacher told us we organize our thoughts. This keeps us on track. It's going to make the speech go better. He said, son, that's a great idea. He said, but you know what? If you know what you're talking about, you don't need notes. Come over here. <sighs> Sit next to me. Let's talk about it. So I did. And for the next 10 or 15 minutes, I got the best advice anybody's ever gotten about how to talk to people, about how to talk about a topic, about how to speak in public. And I think in that moment, that was dad at his best, teaching a lesson with kindness and compassion. Let's just hope it's stuck. So I kept working. I'm almost to the end. I've got about 25 pages in front of me. I've got the scripture and passages and quotes. I've got my analogies and comparisons, funny anecdotes and stories, and I'm ready for the big conclusion, something that's going to tie it all together. Another thought hits me. We all know how Dad loved democracy in America, and I thought about Abraham Lincoln, the Gettysburg Address. And you know, Lincoln wasn't even the featured speaker that day at the commemoration of the cemetery. Edward Everett spoke for two hours, one of the most famous orators of his day. He did that before Lincoln ever took the stage. When Lincoln got up there and gave what he called his little speech, 272 words, less than two minutes. The Gettysburg Address is widely considered the most eloquent articulation of the American vision for democracy that's ever been spoken or written. Nobody knows who Edward Everett is or remembers that there was anybody else on that stage. 
And I am positive there's a lesson in there somewhere if I think about it long enough. <laughs> so there I was, and I'd finished. I got my conclusion. I had everything that was going to tie it up. My long, eloquent, flowering tribute to my father, talking about how great he was, how much he meant to me, how special he was, how much I appreciated him, how much I loved him. How grateful I am that he made me the man I am today. And I thought again about the middle school public speaking lesson, Gettysburg Address, 272 words, less than two minutes, widely considered the most eloquent articulation of the American vision for democracy that's ever been spoken or written. I thought, well, if it's that good, maybe I'll just borrow a little bit. So with apologies to President Lincoln, I know the world will little note nor long remember what I say here, but it will never forget what Dad did here. 23 words, five, six seconds. If less is more, that sounds about right. He was that great. I loved him very much. I will miss him every day. Thank you.